All right. Thanks for listening and subscribing to Learning More. It's Russ with you. And I know it's like, who is this guy, right? I've been gone for uh, an entire summer. Uh, took some time off and I've been actually over the last couple of weeks been putting some interviews together. And I decided that this one right here is going to be my debut episode for our next season. Yeah, season three, which is crazy. Uh, it, it's like, yeah, doing this show, uh, it started out as kind of a an offshoot of another podcast and now entering season three. I want to thank you all. I, I noticed the subscriber counts like went up like crazy over the summer. So thank you uh, for those of you that descri- subscribed. Uh, for those of you that didn't, come on. Why not? Uh, please do <laughs> subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. I really do appreciate it. it really does help um, so that we can get you know different sponsors on the show, things like that, and 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 maybe I could produce more episodes. Maybe this could just become my full time gig. That would be uh, that would be awesome. And 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 it's in your hands. So <laughs> please do subscribe. All right. Enough talking about me and the show. Uh, I will say that I have missed you guys over the summer and uh, I, I, I love the feedback and stuff like that. So please do send more feedback over to uh, over to me. Uh, this show, I feel like you're going to have a lot of feedback for because I am talking with a Hollywood hypnotist. Yes, uh, he has the coolest domain in the world as well. Hypnotist.com. Please do go check it out. I am talking with Kevin Stone. Kevin, thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. Debut show. Wow, I, I'm uh, very honored. Uh, I'm feeling like a little bit like those uh, Simon Cowell, and, I'll, and I'll share, <laughs> I'm going to share that with you for a second. Okay. So I'm. Uh, I was in the gym. What I don't know. A couple of days ago, and there's a new show that just uh, premiered because it's premiere week for all of the. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So. There's a new talk show out by, um, gosh, I forgot her name. She's a singer, another singer uh, who was uh, Simon Cowell's protege. And, you know, she was, she was on American, uh, American Idol, Idol yeah. or America's mm-hmm. Got Talent, mm-hmm. one of those shows. And she became who she became. I forget what her name is. But um, so he, uh, you know, was the first guest on oh. her show. <laughs> and they made a big to do of it. Uh, you, you know, and he was all excited and, you know, all of that fun stuff that they do, uh, for television and TV, uh, daytime TV shows. And so I thought, wow, how interesting, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you know, I thought it was fun. So when you said debut for, for your, your new yeah, show, de- debut for season. Season, season three, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's actually it. happening. I had a uh, flashback I, of uh, yeah. you know, watching. Um, I was sitting there going, oh, "How strange, Simon! <laughs> you know, Simon's changed so much over the years. Now he's he really has, hasn't he? Being the first guest on this particular show, yeah, yeah he really yeah. has. But, you know, it's, yeah, that's what happens when you have children and mellow you out. Right, right. And fall off a bike? Did he fall off a bike one time? And like all kinds uh, of like, there was all kinds of crazy prone. stuff with Simon. Very accident prone. He's always uh, yeah. breaking, falling off bikes or. <laughs> wave runners or some crazy stuff right right now i actually just just you know like my little simon cowell connection is i was actually ryan seacrest's producer back when he was in san francisco for for about a year or so uh when he was doing radio up here yeah awesome awesome guy like yeah. totally cool totally hard working totally like just always out there doing his thing like never never stopped uh, never stopped working in, unless he was eating. Uh, he he eats a lot. I'm going to reveal that oh, little does, secret. Really? Um, yeah, he wow. does. He when he has dinner, it's like two meals. He orders two meals at dinner. It's like crazy. Like I'm like okay, I don't know how. Like two entrees. I'm like how do you do that? Uh, he he was in trading and you know doing all this stuff, and he would only eat during certain times of the day. It was like I don't know what he was doing. Um, but we didn't come out here to talk about uh, th- those those people from American Idol. Instead, we came to talk about uh, hypnotism. Um, so I cover a lot of topics on this show. This is one. And the reason why I really, you know, I wanted to make this like the season three debut is because this is one that has been on my list since I started this podcast. So I'm like, I don't know, 60 or 70 episodes in and I haven't gotten to it yet because I'm going to go ahead and say, because I, I didn't find you yet. I mean, come on, hypnotist.com. Like you're, you're the guy, right? <laughs> I, I'm the guy. I'm so, the one. <laughs> Hollywood hypnotist. Now, how do you get that title? Well, uh, that's an interesting story all within itself. Back in the, 
I've been doing this for 30 years now. Well, going on 30. That's, that's, that's how 30 long years. Been okay. Yeah, I, I, okay. Uh, I even, uh, have to reflect back myself because it all seems like yesterday. And, uh, right. you know, when you yeah. love what you do and you're passionate about it, every day is a fun day. It's not, it's not work. It's, mm-hmm. you know, you just show up and, and you do what you do. And my passion is, you know, helping people help themselves. Uh, there's two, there's a lot of aspects to the work that I do, which I'm sure we're going to get into the entertainment side, but the clinical side as well, is very important. And so, uh, Back in the day when uh, Jay Leno was on his uh, TV talk show, mm-hmm. he had a particular individual on there that I had uh, that was one of my patients, and they uh, stopped smoking through me. And, you know, all of my sessions are just like every other traditional, you know, psychology or therapy. It's confidential. And so I, I don't, I don't. I don't talk about it. There's no, you know, I, I keep the protocol and the etiquette mm-hmm. of what that is because I'm, I'm a board certified hypnotherapist. Anyway, long story short, he, uh, this particular celebrity goes on Leno, basically says, uh, I stopped smoking through that hypnotist, you know, Kevin Stone. And that led into uh, an explosion of all kinds of media contacting me at that point, because this particular individual is pretty well known. And what ended up happening was access Hollywood called me in to talk about that, right, right. that particular celebrity and, okay. and hypnotizing and stopping smoking. And they had some, some people on their staff who wanted to stop smoking. So they wanted to do all of this live. If you remember access Hollywood back in the day, it wasn't so, oh, yeah canned or scripted right. it was so more of an open super format. produced <laughs> yeah. yeah and right. so so i went in and we did a full uh which you can go see on um uh, you know my website and youtube channels uh the, the interview and they basically dubbed me the hollywood hypnotist because they found out about my work with celebrities major sports figures heads of state and just very powerful important people and that was that hidden little secret that they all had until this particular moment and then of course you know that's how it all became of how i became the hollywood hypnotist so it wasn't a self-imposed thing was they kind of dubbing me you know with that okay honor of hey you're 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 that guy aren't you you're the you're the guy everyone talks about that we never knew about Uh, (laughs) so that's how it all became and so i i I liked it at the time uh some people on my team thought it was a little bit hokey um but we just kind of stuck with it because you know in show business there's an old barnum statement where you know he says uh you know, with marketing, you know, just make sure you get the name spelt right. But nobody really remembers your name. They remember these monikers or these little things right. that are attached to what it is. So do, do people really remember my name? No, they just remember me as the Hollywood hypnotist guy. Right. <laughs> so, right. And that's fine with me uh, as long as, again, they get it spelt right and um, and they understand what my passion and what my work is to, you know, facilitate helping them to achieve their ultimate goals. Nice. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not going to ask you which celebrities. I'll, I'll respect that. Um, but how many people have you hypnotized over the years? Who? Thirty you know, years. That's a lot of people. Over a million. Over a million. Over years. a million. Oh, absolutely. Because oh wow. I'm global. I'm global. <laughs> oh, geez. And so, now, yeah. Is this, is this all face to face? You're like actually having an appointment with them? Do you? I mean, I don't know. Is there a hypnotist over Zoom? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell you. With the advent of technology, uh, and and, I, and I'll tell you that a little bit. You know, I kind of pioneered um, a lot of things that were poo pooed by my colleagues, uh, adversaries. You know, I was just not doing what you know. Again, I wasn't falling into line of playing by the rules of what they deemed to be the rules. And so as I became who I was and the notoriety and my success rate, of course, there's more demand. So it's supply demand, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I had to devise ways of, oh, I'm getting calls from Italy. I'm getting calls from Japan. I'm getting calls from people all over the globe seeking out my services to improve their lifestyles, right? So with the advent of technology, the computer system, all this stuff, I, I pioneered all of that a good 
15 nice. years ago. You were, you were uh, ahead of the pandemic. <laughs> I was. And then, you know, yeah. here's the here's the irony uh, that, that happens with that. So I pioneered all that and I still do it to this day because it saves time. Oh, yeah. um, you know, it, sometimes mm-hmm. there's a challenge with a 12 hour time change, like in Australia or India. Um, but we make it work. And so we get up on a zoom or a Skype or, you know, kind of like what we're doing now. And we basically are able to facilitate the session, which now when the pandemic hit, everyone was looking to me, like, how do we do this? How, how, we, we can't see patients. How, how do we do it? You know? So now they have a terminology for it. Um, and now most people are are doing it, still doing it that way, uh, because they find it's more cost effective. It's it's quicker, mm-hmm. more efficient, and so um, it's now become protocol, uh, nice. as opposed to you know poo pooed and and uh, why are you doing this and this is what you shouldn't be doing. And so they, I became a consultant during the pandemic, and still am for many medical facilities uh, and many, many people seeking out how to see their patients and their clients um, in different ways that will help their businesses and to help the people who are seeking them out. So that's the irony nice. in what is happening. It's kind of yeah. it's kind of funny, uh, you know, fast forwarding after all those years of uh, persecution. <laughs> <laughs> you know this sounds like this this question sounds like it's like a saturday night live bit or something but are you ever concerned that you're putting somebody under in hypnosis like on zoom and the connection just dies and like what yeah. happens <laughs> that's a great question and the joke here's the joke that goes with that because people have that fear and that stigma that i've uh-huh. always I've always been battling as long as I've been doing this and that's fine. It's going to be there forever because, you know, Hollywood uh, sensationalizes this modality. It's a natural organic uh, process, but they sensationalize it in the movies and even the current, the recent movies and every movie you ever see, you know, somebody who has this power over this other individual and it's always like uh, evil. It's used for evil. It's never for good. And all of these stereotypical things. And, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, Again, I get all of that and it's fine, but you know, when people really want to understand what it is, so the joke basically is, is, Hey, if you know, if, if you hypnotize me and then you drop dead, what's going to happen to me? (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) What happens? The, The only, the only thing that I've ever, um, the only okay, so I guess you know, like the county fairs or something, right? Like you go to a yeah. county fair and you see a show, and they'll they'll yeah. like generally have like one of the shows is a hypnotist show. Right. I remember there was one that I went to. Uh, the guy was hilarious. Like he was making you know, let me cluck like a chicken and do all these you know silly things, right? Yeah. And I think that that's what a lot of people think that this is is just just that, right? It's more of like the entertainment type of thing, right? You're yeah. talking also clinical because you mentioned. Um, stopping smoking. Like yeah. what else can hypnotism help people with? Well, uh, many things. Uh, again, I'm board certified. And so I'm on staff over at Weiss Memorial, Cedar sinai um, And uh, with White's Memorial, uh, I started with them back in the, in the 90s with pain management, TMJ, and dental kind of issues because people have fear of needles. Really? You have, you have TMJ is a lot of pain in the jaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so my specialty became pain for a while, uh, among many other things. You see, this is, uh, again, let's get back to the joke of, hey, if you if you just kind of – and actually there's a movie that um, – I'm not sure if it's uh, The Office or uh, Night at Sounds Bernie's right. or something like that oh, okay. <laughs> where, where the hypnotist – where they go and they get hypnotized for some reason – and the hypnotist basically dies right there in the. Oh, you know what? I, th- I think I remember that. Yeah, that, that, or yeah. I can't so, remember. Uh, yeah, there's something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. It, it, to me, it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh right. And then Adam Sandler came out with something uh, on one of his uh, records back in the day uh, of his height of when he did Hanukkah and all of that. Mm-hmm. On the same record, he did <laughs> he, he did a hypnosis session with him and another comedian is hysterical. Uh, and you got to just appreciate it from my point of view. Other oh, people yeah. probably take it a little too seriously, but you know, it's all in jest, but uh, let's get back to the joke. Cause the joke kind of falls in line with 
you know, what the other question you're asking is, what can you do in hypnosis? Well, most people just think it's stop smoking and lose weight. And now, mm-hmm. admittedly, I, I started my career that way. I mean, that's how I started out, uh, just like everybody else, because why fight the, why fight the tide? Uh, you know, I didn't want to swim upstream, was swimming with the stream to start my private practice to, to you know, make a living off of this. And so smoking and weight is what everybody understood. So that's how I started. But it evolved into uh, what it is today. And basically, here's the great news. Anything that you want to change in your life, and that's a variation of things, right? And life is cyclical. So there's always going to be changes, and you always need the tools to do that. Unfortunately, in our world, in our society, we're not really taught those basic tools. And hypnosis is that tool. It's a natural, organic process. So again, back to the joke, if I pass out, die, it during while you're in a hypnotic state, you're basically just going to come out of the state as if you were coming out of a natural sleep state. Just like when you mm-hmm. wake up in the morning, it's the same process. So it's not the hypnotist who has control. The what what's really happening is, is you're in full control. The hypnotist is a guide, is a facilitator, guiding you through a process that you have a good rapport and trust that he's going to guide you where you need to go and basically reprogram your subconscious mind. So it's like Mm -hmm. a computer system. Your subconscious mind is 88% of your brain's capacity. Your conscious mind, which everyone's listening to with right now, is your uh, conscious mind, which is 12% of your brain's capacity. So you can already see what part of the brain is dominant, right? 88 subconscious. Mm -hmm. So all information is stored into that subconscious mind. The hypnotist basically, with your permission, goes into your subconscious mind and basically rewires, reprograms your computer to do what it is that you wanted to do that you find challenging that you're not able to do. And it's really that simple. There's no complex system. There's no hocus pocus. I don't get any voodoo dust sprinkling on you. We don't do any (laughs) fire dances. Uh, None of this stuff takes place. You see it all in the movies, cartoons, all of this nonsense. And and again, they're just sensationalizing it to be what it isn't uh, and really confusing people. But once Mm -hmm. you understand that all of us go in and out of hypnosis a thousand times a day, how natural state it is, then you understand, well, hey, whoa, wait a minute. How do I harness this power? How do I, how do I, how do I harness this to change my life? Let's say stop smoking or, you know, addiction or weight or pain or who knows? You know, for me in mm-hmm. the beginning, um, I was a nail biter. I used to bite mm. my Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to stop. You know, they had, they had, a, they had at the time, and I'm sure they still do. They had like a cream, and then there's a liquid, yeah, right. yeah. And, you know, all these things, and none of it worked. Um, and so when I really got into this, because I went to college for this, and it was really fascinating to me. And I thought, wow, okay, um, you know, I had a lot of reservations, so I get what it's like to be on the other side of this, because I, I, I came from that. I came from New England. I'm very, a very conservative place to be. My thinking and everything was just so structured. So when I decided to start learning about hypnotism, you know, my family basically wanted to disown me. All my friends were like, you're crazy. And again, I got that whole pushback of what are you doing? And of course, now who I am, who I am, now all of a sudden, everybody wants to be your friend, right? <laughs> and borrow right. money. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, okay. I, I wrote down like, I wrote down like 10 questions. So sure. please, please excuse me. This is going to be a long interview for you, but <laughs> so, okay. So you, you, you went to college for this. Well, yes. I, I didn't even, I didn't even know there was classes for, for, for this. Is, is that well, how you learned this? Well, back in the day, uh, it, it was, there wasn't many, many places to learn this. Again, it was taboo. It, you know, it was uh-huh. kind of like, uh, you know, underground stuff and, you know, people who were using it were always bad people like Jim Jones, David Koresh and all these people, blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, there's a college, there's a college in Tarzana, California, and they actually offered college credit to do this. 
and they were one of the most reputable schools. There was a couple of schools. There was another one in Glendale. And um, I found the one that was right for me, and it was that one because it was more clinical, and they really kind of taught a structured program, and I felt that it was more suited for me. Just like anybody else goes to any other schooling program, you have to find the school that's right for you. Just because Pepperdine is uh, you can come in on a scholarship doesn't mean you should go. Uh, right. It's right. got to be right. right for you to be able to be successful. So basically, that's how it worked for me. It was a two-year program. Um, I was fascinated by it, but I went in with a lot of reservation, just like anybody else listening to this program or trying to understand the applications of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. And what made me really, my turning point was basically a field trip over to Cedar sinai And we all went in and I was the guy you know, I was there for the college credit, but I also want to learn how to do it because I thought it was fascinating. There's a lot of different things. You know, again, I was I was a younger man back then. I was a little more immature. And I was that guy, me and another guy. We were those guys in the class. Class clowns mm-hmm. sitting in the back thinking, yeah, whatever. We're all here for the <laughs> – we're all here for the <laughs> – <laughs> right. <laughs> there's a lot there's of people few, listening who can relate to that. A few so, things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're just, you know, we're, we're just there for the credits and uh, learning how to do this to, you know, hypnotize girls, basically. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we go on this field trip and, like, yeah, whatever. So we were told that there was this famous opera singer who was going to be hypnotized to have a baby under a uh, C section. Okay. And so, yeah, we said the same thing. Yeah, well, whatever. Sure, we'll yeah. go. Okay. We to, we're part of the class. We have to stay in the class. We'll go, whatever. So we go, and we're behind this two-way mirror, like in the police departments, all that kind of thing. And so she knew we were there. Uh, everything was disclosed, uh, but she couldn't see us, but we could see her. So, okay. again, she was this famous opera singer from Italy. She basically um, was told – we were told that she had already had six sessions prior – to this, uh, what's about to happen, if it was going to happen. And uh, if she felt any discomfort or pain, all she was supposed to do was let out an opera note or raise her hand, and they would stop and give her the epidural and give her drugs and do it the the way that is traditional, right? Okay. So we're like, yeah, okay, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Guy, the, The doctor comes in within a couple of minutes, boom, she's in hypnosis, just like you see on TV and in the movies or in a, a stage show like you did at the fair and all of that. She's in this hypnotic state. We're like, yeah, whatever. Giggling, laughing in the back. We would, we're being told to be quiet and, you know, be respectful and pay attention. All right. of it. And right. so long story short, she basically um, she's not ready to have this baby. So the baby's coming. They do the C-section. There she is just lying there, dead weight. Not, not Doesn't let out a note. Doesn't let out a sound. Nothing. Has the baby, they don't, and that's it. They take her away. And uh, from that point, that was my turning point. And I thought, whoa, that's pretty, Hmm. pretty intense thing to watch. A lot of pain going on there. Women know this. And a lot of pain. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I thought, wow, this stuff must be that powerful. So I started to, we had practice sessions on every Saturday with our groups to Mm -hmm. practice on each other doing hypnosis. So my first things were, uh, of course, biting my nails because I was, I was getting into Get my taking care of, yeah, yeah, I was my, getting into it being a mature male at that point. And I'm like, why I still am biting my nails? That's kind of kind of silly, right? So that was the first thing I changed was that, and then of course I went on to make many other changes, and here I am today. So that's how the all kind of worked out for me as to how. Uh, my turning points were in understanding this and really taking it seriously and understanding that it is a very powerful resource. It's a natural mm-hmm. organic tool. And why not plug into it? Because it's free and we're doing it all day long anyway. So right. common forms of hypnosis, driving down the freeway or highway, arm out the window, your hair's blowing in the wind, you listen to this program or you listen to some music and you're and you're just driving along you realize you missed your exit three exits back somewhere right i've I've been there yeah that's hypnosis watching a good movie had a great conversation with james cameron about that how he was a hypnotist we'll talk about that if we have time later Uh, watching a good movie reading a good book uh you're sitting in class not paying attention to the instructor just kind of zoning out right daydreaming 
That's all hypnosis. That's the that's the state. That's hmm. what it is. That's how natural it is. So why not harness that power and utilize it for yourself to change the negatives and the positives in your life? You know, I, I've seen it where people can go under, like, you know, like in these, again, I'm going back to the stage show. Um, yeah. But, you know, you have 20 people up there, 10 people up there, whatever. Yeah. And there's yeah. some that just can't get into it, right? Yeah. And you kind of pull those people down because they're not, right. it's not working for them. Right. So why does it work for some and not for others? Well, it's so simple. Uh, some people can't, I mean, even in real life, <laughs> just normal life, they can't focus. <laughs> they can't concentrate. They get distracted. Squirrel. Uh, you know, right. they're talking to you like, squirrel. I'm sure in a lot of the interviews you've done, you're, 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 you're kind of going in a direction and all of a sudden they're going in another direction. So, <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. So people in general, <laughs> our behavior, uh, a lot of people don't know how to focus or concentrate or, or they also have the stigma of what they think they, they know this is. And so when they start to feel the relaxation from a hypnotic state, it freaks them out. Right. So, so they, they, they get a little scared. They don't yep. want to go under. They're, yep. they're afraid of, of yep. whatever's going to happen. And so they, they pull out basically. Huh. Yeah. They just, they freak out and they, 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 they that's it. You can't, they won't do it. So uh, seeing, seeing that on stage, does that happen in like the one-on-one, -on -one, like the clinical type stuff as well? Uh, no, no. Um, well, yes and no. Uh, I'll give you the simple answers. Um, the yes is because people have good intent and they know what they're going to do. And they basically know who they're calling and what they're going to, what's about to happen. But when they really get down to it, um, how can I explain this in metaphorically? So it's kind of like you you get invited to a pool party and then uh, you know, you can't swim, but everybody just jumped into the pool. And now you're the only one who hasn't jumped in the pool and you're sitting mm. on the outside of the pool and they're all encouraging you to go in. You're like, Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to hang out here. And then you start putting your toe in the pool, right? Just to feel mm -hmm. it out. The next thing you know, you're in the pool and then you're enjoying it. So it's mm. the same thing with, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be hypnotized. I don't know what that's going to feel like. So our critical factor starts firing off and it says, um, it's like a, it's like a smoke alarm. It basically says danger, 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 Will Rogers. You shouldn't be doing this when really you should. And when you do do it, you realize I should have did all that in the first place and removed my fear and my critical factor and just allowed myself to trust what was really happening. Let's let's talk about the ethics of this. So you, you mentioned earlier, oh, you know, I don't want to hypnotize girls or, you know, you even yeah. you, you mentioned Jim Jones and, and yeah. uh, you know, like these people that the, the, there's people out there that would definitely use this for, for, uh, for bad, for evil, for Absolutely. not ethical reasons. Right. Like how do you, you mentioned kind of not getting into it in a clinical session, like people can kind of, you know, the dip in the toe in the water. Well, what if you, you know, you, you, you get in the pool and you're drowning, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> let, let's talk about those instances where yeah. maybe somebody is trying to do this to you for an, an like a, a non-ethical reason. How, like what happens there? Like, can you pull yourself out of this? Absolutely. Positively. That's the great thing of once you understand the process. Now you realize that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So therefore you're controlling it all. And not allowing it to control you. And here's the crazy thing. This is going to blow your minds. Again, we're under it all day long. This is why you wear the different types of clothing you wear, jewelry, uh, sneakers, jeans, because you're, you're suspect to the commercialism that they're utilizing the power of suggestibility in. Now, remember, all advertisers do it. Political figures utilize it. There's a big deal with Obama back in that administration as to how he understood and he understood the power of it and was utilizing it in his speeches and what, what he did. Uh, he's not the only one, but there's several. And remember, I'm a consultant, so I'm kind of dropping hints here a little bit as to some of the people that I work with <laughs> have to, to understand the okay. resource to understand the power of a natural organic state. And like anything else, my friends, it can be used for evil or good. That's just how life works. Mm -hmm. this, this podcast that you're doing, you know, I researched it to make sure it was in alignment with what my message was going to be and put out in a positive way. But also, again, show both sides of, you know, what we're doing. But again, give the information in a proper way.
but you can be using this podcast for for evil and and sending messages to people to you know have anarchy and whatever and so everything everything in life can be used for good or bad and right. so you know when it comes to hypnosis of course again the stigma is because hollywood since the inception of making movies has put that evilness to it's look it sells movies because people want to see that right you know even yeah, the totally. movies, you know with totally. get out and all of that stuff mm -hmm. um they put it there because again it, it makes people think you want to go see it but then you never take it any steps further to really understand it and why it's happening right. that way so um everyone's a hypnotist really quite frankly, you're a hypnotist because you have this podcast and you have a lot of listeners who listen and they tune in, uh, I guess it's weekly or daily or however many days you're doing this because they enjoy what your format is. They enjoy mm -hmm. your voice, the way you're doing it, and they enjoy what's really happening. These are things on a subconscious level they don't even realize that I'm pointing out. Right. So are you really right. a hypnotist? Yes, you are because you're mm -hmm. doing things naturally and organically. That you don't even understand what you're doing. But if you do understand what you're doing, then you can start to sway the country uh, as a politician or you, as a as a, uh, a, a, marketer. a marketer for a major yeah. company. You can understand yeah. how to influence people to buy your product. Where is the line between marketing and hypnotism? Like, where do you see that line? I think the line is extremely blurred, and I un, I think that mass major mass companies understand it and they utilize it. They've been using it for years. Back in the 70s, there's many books were wrote, written about the subliminal suggestions, yeah, not right. only in advertising, um, but in music. 70s was a big mm -hmm. deal with subliminals and, and, oh, yeah. and power. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so there's all kinds of laws put in place and all kinds of things, you know, backwards messages on the Beatles albums and all this stuff. Um, but advertisers uh, used it um, and they do it still today because they appeal to the senses of what our human condition is. And so it's happening. You don't even realize it's happening. Mm hmm. And that's where, you know, like people have talked about like the CIA doing stuff or, you know, whatever, right. like the government's doing things to right. motivate people to do, you know, whatever. Is, is that hypnotism or is that, is Absolutely. that, is that a form of it? Yeah. We want to see a powerful movie. Watch the Manchurian Candidate. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. So that's based on mm -hmm. a lot of factual things. Of course, it's a movie, so it's sensationalized, dramatized. But that's actual, factual. That's how they used to program for the Vietnam War. For Again, it's so simple. Sleep deprivation was how the Vietnamese would take the Americans, throw them in a hole, put water up to their neck, and have sleep deprivation to be able to pr program them to do exactly what they wanted to do. Right. Call it hypnosis. Okay. It's sleep deprivation, which is actually the reason why of what – why they ended up following orders and doing things that they shouldn't have been doing because they understood the power of doing it. So all of this falls in under the, the umbrella of hypnosis, the word hypnosis. And mm. actually it, it doesn't, but okay. In our world, that's <laughs> how we interpret it. Right. Wow. And so you do, okay. So you do the clinical side, but you also have, I, I saw some like, like power programs that are available, which I get, is that, is that a form of self hypnosis? Is this like people are listening to audio? How do the power programs work? Power programs are very, very extremely. I, I mean, I spent years putting them together before I released them because I wanted them to be very, uh, a hundred percent, close to a hundred percent. Now nothing's a hundred percent in life. And anybody who ever tells you that they're lying to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they're, they're pretty darn close to perfection of what they could be. Um, and so it took me a long time to release them. And basically, yeah, it's like a one-on-one -on -one session with me as if I was in the room. Oh, okay. And so they listen to the program and they basically allow themselves to go through their process. I hypnotize them. I give them the suggestions to lose weight, smoking, or whatever the program happens to be, empowerment. Uh, and it's a cost-effective way. There's something I also wanted to do because, look, 
come to see somebody like me, I mean, I, I, I try to keep my prices affordable. Even my, my prices are still affordable to this day. And I get a lot of grief for it from my team and from a lot of other people. And even when people call me and go, wow, my, my other therapist is, is double what you charge. You're the guy. And I go, look, I, I'm not in it. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, here, I'm in it to make a living. I need to make a living and put food on my table like anybody else. But my passion and my mission statement has always been the same. My passion is to help people to help themselves. And whatever tools that I've learned along the way, I'm going to incorporate that into my sessions or when, when you meet me. So my power programming systems are the same thing. And it's more cost effective because a lot of people can't afford the session fee or the multiple session fee. So you get the power programming system and it's a little bit more cost effective and you're going to get pretty much the same thing. Gotcha. Now, okay. So somebody buy like, and you know, uh, I, I like to play the both sides of the card here, right? Like let's, let's, Double let's talk it. about exactly. Let's, let's look at this other side of, okay. Somebody spends, you know, I, I, I don't know how much or the, you know, these are, but let's say somebody spends, you know, a, a little bit of money for one of these sessions. Uh, how do they know that anything's happening? How, how do they see the results? How do they know that something is actually taking place in their life or changing in their life? Like, how do they know this? Oh, you will. Yeah. Uh, let's take the basics for again. And I hate to keep talking about the basics because then it's like I'm promoting again. Oh, oh, well, hypnotists are only known for smoking and weight. But to keep things <laughs> simple and to have everyone understand how, how it basically works, we'll, we'll talk about smoking, right? Okay. So when you start – and look, uh, smokers understand this, you know, and how hard it can become to, to, to break that addiction because they're not just addicted to smoking. There's nicotine, there's, there's, um, there's uh, all kinds of chemicals that they're addicted to in that cigarette, um, caffeine's in the cigarette. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so they understand that when they try to stop by their own willpower, that it's impossible. So they need something to do it. So there's the gum, there's the pill, there's the needle, there's all these great things on the market. Do they all work? Sure. They all work temporarily. Mm. What you got to reprogram is that computer. Mm -hmm. Just like computers we sit at every single day. It was programmed by a computer programmer. And when they crash and burn, a guy comes in, he's going to fix it. Or the mechanic, same thing with an engine in a car. You've got to understand your brain and mind system. And so basically, once you understand how to reprogram that and you have the tools to do it, then you're therefore you're able to do it. How is it like I'm assuming, I mean, it's going to be a little bit different for each person, right? So do you, are you catering your, your, your clinical sessions differently per, you know, per the person you're working with? And, and how do you do that? Yeah, everyone responds differently, but there's a lot of similarities because we're all of human condition, right? So human condition is pretty much uniform in all cultures. So what we think sometimes because we're arrogant and prideful in America that, oh, people over in another country aren't doing what we do or how we feel. Uh, they may have less uh, opportunity than us, but we're all created the same. All human condition and behavior is the same. This goes for a remote village in Africa, Chinese, you know, restricted village all the way to a, a, a metropolis or a city like uh, San Francisco. And so people are the same. God created all of us pretty much the same. So human condition, human behavior uh, varies depending on individual and personality. But in the end, once you understand it, because again, here's the, here's the, here's the, Here's the thing that's so incredible. All behavior is learned behavior. So guess what? <laughs> you can unlearn it. Right. But we're not provided you can our not world to do, it. To do mm -hmm. it. And this is one of those modalities, those tools to help you to do it. Other people seek out yoga, meditation, uh, spiritual, spirituality, uh, all of these things absolutely positively powerful. Right. And you got to find what's right for you. So everything works, but you got to find what works for you permanently. And as far as I'm concerned, I've done everything and tried everything, tested everything, even with the hypnosis. Believe me, I was that guy in class. 
not only the <laughs> guy in the back, back with the other guys, right? But I was that guy challenging the instructor every five seconds because I really wanted to understand why, how, and is it permanent? Mm-hmm. And so I had questions, lots of questions, like the questions you have right now. There's like all the questions the listeners are conjuring up in their mind right now. Absolutely. Uh, and you should have those questions because it's a very powerful thing to know and understand and utilize in your personal life, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm going to say usually at about this mark, I'm like, oh, thanks for joining me. And, and I'm wrapping up the podcast. But I mean, come on. I've got the Hollywood hypnotist, Kevin Stone, on. on. It's the debut episodes. And I, I've got, I feel like, th- like three or four more questions for you. So I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna keep you a little longer because sure. uh, I got to hear about James Cameron. I, I got to hear about, you know, I want to talk a little about uh, entertainment versus clinical. And I also, here's, here's this one. Have you ever been asked to do something that you've just like flatly said no and, and, and walked away from? Yes. But are you sure we're not going into overtime because I have you hypnotized to do so? Well, or is it your own free <laughs> Well, now you got me questioning. Maybe you do. One of your listeners is thinking that. Say, oh, he, he's got him hypnotized. Yeah, you, you got me going here. I don't know. <laughs> What you, what actually, what I guess I should be asking you is, is can you hypnotize the listeners to become subscribers and do some reviews or something? Because that that always helps. Uh, you just did it. You just did it, my friend. And you, is it, perfect. Those, those simple suggestions you just gave are going to allow them to do what they need to do for you to continue to prosper and continue this program. That's Man, it. You know, I, I I could totally see. Like, you know, I mean, I've, I've done, I've done sales and marketing in my, in my professional career, you know, as, as well as, uh, you know, the old days of working in radio. And it's like so much that I learned in radio about, you know, promoting what's going to happen next. You know, you, you, you say, oh, I'm going to go do this. That way they hang in during the commercial and then you, you, you do it. And then you promise something else and then they hang in there and then you, yeah. and then you do that. You like, it's like, it's promise and deliver, promise and deliver. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's promise, promise, deliver promise to, you know, it's, there's these little recipes that you do in in radio. And what I've noticed is doing those things in like a sales meeting. It's, it's the same thing doing those things in marketing content. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, you're, 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 you're giving them little tidbits and and making them, you know, hang in there. Like I promoted the James Cameron thing to keep people listening a little bit. Sure. Um, (laughs) You know, like you you do that. So I can see where uh, learning, uh, you know, hypnotism or, or learning those skills could really like help a person in like sales or, or, or marketing. So this, this could help people in their professional careers just by, by learning how to do this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And remember too, the key in life, and this is what uh, we learned as uh, humans early on is uh, especially in athletics, sports uh, or any training program, Repetition, repetition, repetition mm-hmm. is key. Look at uh, look at our military. What do they do every day? They train uh, firefighters, uh, people who are in those kind of professions. They do the same thing day in, day out. Why? Because when it's go time or when the pressure and the stress is really on, they got to be able to just go what is called uh, in the acting world, rote. And so the mind automatically kicks into what is trained. And Mm -hmm. repetition is key uh, in everything. And so is that hypnosis? Absolutely, because it's suggestibility. So Mm -hmm. again, the basics here, take the word hypnosis out of everything. Use the word suggestibility because it's all around us. Mm -hmm. Now, even with your spouses, think about this for a second, okay? We've talked about heads of state. We've talked about powerful people. We've talked about advertisers. We've talked about all these other influencers and now even today, we have eBay influencers and YouTube influencers and all these influencers. You're like, what? I, I mean, look, I, I'm a little bit uh, older generation. And so I'm like, what? How? And you really understand. You look at these influencers, you see that the, the format is all the same. They're doing all the same. And some of them understood yeah. it and some of them fell into it just naturally, right? Right. Think about this for a second. I mentioned spouse, right? Or friends. Mm-hmm. So the greatest hypnotists are each other. So whoever's closest to you is really you're taking in that suggestion 
and you don't even realize it because mm. that first person you go to is your spouse for if you when you trust and you want to get really vulnerable with them and you ask them their opinion they give you the information and sometimes we resist it but in the end we probably pretty much follow along with what they're saying why right. because they're like third party but they're also loving so you trust that mm -hmm. so that's hypnotism as purest form wow so Okay, that brings up the question of how, how do how do people how do people trust you? <laughs> how, do, how do they know that you're not just convincing them to do something like like you you keeping me longer on the show here? <laughs> how do we know? How do we know to trust you? How do you, how do you get that to happen? Yeah, I think that comes from the hard work and the thirty years that I've been doing this. Uh, my credentials speak for themselves. The website speaks for itself. Yeah, um, yeah. People call me. Um, sometimes they don't end up at the website. They end up through some other resource. And I always send them to the website. And I say, look, check it out. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, that's fine. I'm not interested in, in working with you or in your business because uh, we're just, you know, we're, we're climbing a mountain. And so mm -hmm. you're not ready for somebody like, like me. So, you know, I continuously work hard. That's why I do programs like this, my friend, to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get the message out and to have people understand that, hey, even with people like me who have great success and well-known and world-renowned and all these titles that have been uh, put upon me and that I've earned throughout the years, um, look, I'm, I'm just another guy, just like everybody else. And again, I, I stick to my mission statement of helping people to help themselves because look, I need help too as a human. And so why not provide tools that others can rely on as well? And so that's just the basis, basic foundation for me and always will be the basic foundation. And so the trust factor is built in from that. When you do mm. what is right, the rest will come, you know, mm -hmm. feel the dreams. You know, I hate, I hate to right. quote, but that's basically what it is. Do what you yeah. love, the rest will be. But you have to do it in sincerity. You have to do it in truth. Again, these are all the principles of, of, of biblical principles. So yeah. that's a whole other story for another day. But that's where I'm grounded, uh, right. absolutely, positively. And so you follow those basic rules, <laughs> and, and you're going to be fine. Yeah. The trust yeah, in well, all that comes about on its own. I don't, have to, right. I don't have to get it. You have to earn it. I, I truly believe I earn it, but it will come because you're well, doing what is right. Well, with a million people in 30 years, I mean, come on. You, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People have got to trust that. <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, again, I get the opportunity to luxury. I'll do a, I'll do a, you know, think about this too. We haven't talked about this. Tony Robbins. Now, Tony, Tony's mm -hmm. roots are in hypnotism. He doesn't tell you that. No, no, I didn't Tony, know that. Tony, his roots are in hypnotism, and he, and he talks about it. He talks about NLP, talks about a lot of other modalities and techniques. He's doing hypnotism is what he's doing. Hmm. And so people always ask, what's the difference between you and Tony? I go, the only difference between me and Tony is that Tony owns an island in Fiji, and I don't know owns a humble home. And so <laughs> right. Right. It's the only difference between me and Tony, but yeah. Tony's doing the same work. Although I, I don't know, a home in Southern California that that might be as much as an island in Fiji. Well, <laughs> some people and believe see me, these I, prices I, here in California. I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know it, I know it, and uh, <laughs> others who are on the outside who want to come here can't afford to come here. So to sustain and be here, we're blessed to be what it is, my friend. And you're, so, okay. at, you're in a higher market than I think I am. Yeah, it's you're it's pretty nutty up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's like New York rates up there. Oh yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's uh, it is definitely crazy in the Bay Area. I, I, I at some point I got to do a podcast on that, but uh, I'll, uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll we'll get that going. Uh, so okay, like even like you know Carl Jung and 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 Freud, like they they did some yes, they uh, did. hypnotism, right? Yeah. So I mean, this goes back. It's got a lot of of uh, famous people, you know, that, that we've heard of, it's got a lot of research around it, right. but there's also that, you know, like you bring up like the entertainment slide, like we all think of, you know, whatever the, the sitcom from the eighties and the, you know, the person holding a clock in front of somebody or a watch in front of somebody and swinging it back and forth and then, you know, making them do something silly. Yeah. Like, how do you, 
it's it's difficult to have the entertainment side and the clinical side in, in a way I would assume because it, it might make people shy away from maybe the clinical side where it might make people, you know, even though this is a great tool for them, it might make them not want to do that because of the entertainment side. Do you, do you see that at all? Or, or am I just being hypnotized? Uh, never did, never did quite frankly. And I always had seen it from, again, I, I guess I was different and this is why I became who I am because I I've always seen things a little bit differently than what most people try to make you think or want you to think or want you to fit in the mold. I just never really subscribed to any of that. I understood the power as well as the negative side of uh, comedy stage hypnotism as a mm. marketing vehicle. Mm. Gotcha. Look, think about this for a second. What doctors, you know, really advertise? Do doctors really <laughs> advertise? They have shingles outside, big giant flashing signs like lawyers and all these other professions saying, right. hey, me, this is what I can do for you. Do you really see a surgeon have a sign up going, Hey, I'm the greatest surgeon in the world. Come and see me. No. All right. So what is the best advertising mm -hmm. marketing tool? You know what it there is. Right? What is oh, it? Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> well, it's, it's getting in, getting in front of people. Yeah. Word, word of mouth. mouth. Exactly. Okay. That's, so that's the serious me, viral marketing right there. The, 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 the uh, power uh, of getting in front of people and doing, uh, stage comedy stage hypnosis and showing hypnosis mm -hmm. large or small groups and instead of one-on-one -on -one, doing it that way now there's a, there's a problem that came with that for me because i grew up introverted shy and couldn't even even in college i wouldn't go to the the parties or anything because i was an introverted guy wanted to keep to myself and i couldn't even speak with one-on-one -on -one. I couldn't even do that. Now I get up in front of 20,000, 30,000 people, lectures, shows, whatever it is, and, and I'm very comfortable. But back in the day, I couldn't do that. Mm. So I had a challenge, didn't I? Because here I understood the power of the marketing of getting the word out and the message of what I wanted to do with this modality, hypnosis. Uh, and to, uh, But I couldn't do it because I couldn't get up in front of people. Because the number one fear, you know what the number one fear in the world is? It's it's not death. It's nope. public speaking, right? Exactly. It's the and Seinfeld that, joke. You'd rather most people would rather be uh, in the coffin than doing the uh, doing yeah. the the eulogy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Taxes. Yeah. Uh, that's another fear. But no, yeah, no, that's another big one. Yeah. Number one, public speaking. And so mm -hmm. he got an introvert, shy guy, all his life now understands a marketing uh, way to get his passion out to the masses. How's he going to do that? Well, hypnosis really helped me with that, obviously. I became mm -hmm. more confident and um, getting it out there. And again, it's it's if you have the luxury of seeing different stage, comedy stage hypnosis people, you'll understand they're rooting and where they're at. Either they're strictly performers and entertainers and possibly not that good, or you're seeing somebody who really is passionate and is going to guide that program in a way where it's, I know for me, and, my, and again, my mission statement from the beginning, it was going to be edutainment. So it's education mm. and entertainment at the same time. So nice. what's the best way to get to people? Through laughter. So right. my programs are always, and right from the beginning, my, my humble roots in, in, in a living room, in a, a famous Hollywood party with a producer has a whole nother story for another day. That was my first show ever freaked out of my mind. Um, <laughs> but I went in with, again, my mission statement and what I wanted to do, which was to empower people through entertainment, laughter, and they would come at the end of it feeling empowered by it. Basically, Tony understood that as well. That's why Tony Robbins became Tony Robbins. He's doing the same right. thing. Same thing. He's just not using doing it the way I'm doing. It. He's doing it a different way, but it's all mm -hmm. the same. All the same. Okay, so you used hypnotism, or you were hypnotized in in, in order to to help overcome your fear of, of speaking on the stage. Does that mean like okay, seven o'clock you get hypnotized, seven thirty you're on the stage and you're feeling great? Like how how long does that take <laughs> to to make this happen? I'm assuming that's not the case. That's that's more of a you know like something that would happen on Who's the Boss in the '80s. But uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, now, now that is that quick. Um, yeah, I can do hypnosis under five minutes if I'm feeling stress or anxiety in a situation and really put myself back into balance or check. Okay. Uh, athletes call it a runner's high. Uh, everyone has a different label for it. Um, mm-hmm. It's a zone, whatever it is you want to mm-hmm. call it. So once you understand it and you practice it enough, like anything else, it becomes a known. It becomes something in your your mind body system that automatically you can go to. And so. Back in the day, yeah, it took quite quite some time to get to that point, uh, and then yeah, it, it, it's kind of hard to explain. Even even uh, entertainers and actresses and all this actors can't really describe it to you that moment before they're going to take that stage and that curtain opens up and the light hits them. What there's a shift. It's really hard yeah. to explain that shift. And and, yeah. and again, if you've been there, um, you, you know you know what I'm talking right. about. I can't even. Yeah, I, I just had to do a, a speech, a uh, little, little stand up thing in front of uh, like, you know, I don't know, it was like three, three or 400 people. And yes, as soon as like I grabbed the microphone and I put the microphone in a certain spot, it's, it's, I'm on. I'm like, it's kind of, it's a weird, like, I get what you're saying because it's kind of almost an out of body experience yeah. when I'm, when I'm doing these things. Or, you know, I do like improv theater. Um, and when doing a show and there's an audience, it's so much, I'm, I'm so much better in front of the audience than I am in a classroom setting with improv just because I have that, I, I fall into that stage. I, I don't know what that is, but, and I don't know how I got there, but I, I know exactly what you mean. And it's, it's sort of an out of, out of body experience where I don't know if it's, it, it doesn't feel like it's me. It's, it's, right. it's different. It's weird. Yeah. Yep. And, and yeah, very hard to describe. Yes. Um, so, okay. Uh, people are listening to this. We're, we're, you know, they're, they're, they're learning about this. Who out there that's listening, you know, should do this? Like who are candidates for doing this? Everybody. Everybody who's willing and wanting to understand, again, a natural organic process that that God provides, nature provides for us to take advantage of. Everyone. And so, and so let me rephrase the question for you. Kevin, how – what is the age of – age range of who you can hypnotize? And can you hypnotize deaf no. people, blind people? Uh, the answer is yes, 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 and yes. Because, again, I'm utilizing mm. a natural organic tool, understanding the power behind it, and guiding that person through the process. I can hypnotize all the way down to five. I've done two-year-olds uh, with great success. Really? Yeah. Wow. But five, is, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it at five, five, year, five years of age. Wow. So when, when parents, and if you're a parent out there, and you see your child go into this natural, relaxed comfortable state it boggles your mind and parents you know what i'm talking about and so when they see this they they want to understand how to utilize it <laughs> gotcha <laughs> i always tell them for an extra 20 bucks right. I'll, i will go behind the bill and i'll show you all the secrets you need to know <laughs> <laughs> all right we got we got to hear the james cameron story he he uh, yeah, he, he he's done this. Like what? Yeah, crazy, huh? So yeah, um, I get a call from his people. They call my people. You know how it works in Hollywood, right? Right. We both mm-hmm. call the people, and uh, they they come to me and they say, "Hey, listen, uh, James Cameron is having a party. Uh, he wants you to come." Uh, okay, well, does he want me to just show up and be part of the celebrity? people or what does he want me to do no no he wants to he wants to have a show he wants to do a comedy stage hypnosis show i go okay, okay. Cool. sure where's it gonna be oh it's gonna be in his house okay so you know go through all the red tape all this to check in all this back even now today the security is much more because of what's happened in our world but back then you'd still mm-hmm. think wow this is like you know i'm trying to get into the white house so um i get there set up everything and uh now he had a lot of reservations kind of like a lot of the questions you you have and a lot of people who i hope i answered those questions during this program who are listening to this program he, yeah, he's just another guy again we're all we're mm-hmm. all the same people we just have different talents that have been recognized and we became who we are right and so 
he started asking me questions before the program started. Uh, you know, traditional stage hypnosis show, getting volunteers involved and all his guests and all of that. And he had a lot mm-hmm. of questions about, wow, this stuff is, you know, how does it work? You know, so, you know, and here I am trying to set up, I'm trying to do my job, but I'm getting paid to do, be there for. And um, here's James Cameron, you know, and that this was at the, this was right after Titanic. This was after the whole thing. This is, yeah. Okay. Titan- James Cameron was a household name. He, you know, mm-hmm. this guy, you, you're like, holy, you're at his house. This is James Cameron, right? So he's asking me all this, and I'm like, James, I, I really need to get this set up because if I don't get set up, I mean, we can talk all you want after I, you, I, I do what, I, what you brought me here for. And then I'll tell you what, after you see what I do, I guarantee you 90% of your questions are going to be answered. Is that fair? So I actually put, put, put James Cameron in check. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just he just cashed in in a two two billion dollar movie, and you're like, ah, leave me alone, buddy. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. But okay. he's fascinated by what was happening, right? So anyway, I do the whole thing, and again, there's, there's his friends up there, his daughters, his, his her daughter's friends. It's just people that they know, and when you see. Uh-huh. Let you know doing those things like again you've managed a couple of times you've been to the fair and you're looking at people you may or may mostly probably don't know and thinking ah right. they're faking it ah they're doing it because they want to be an actor act well all that kind of stuff but when you know the people then it really boggles your mind right so he's he's watching all this with complete fascination right so mm-hmm. at the end of the program we wrap it up and of course after that I, I've got to deal with a lot of questions from the people who are volunteers people from the audience because again it, it triggers a lot of that fascination it's the whoa because I've only seen this on TV or in the movies and I've seen it right live like five feet away from me I can't even believe what I've seen so everyone has a lot of questions right so after I got done with all of that now I'm exhausted pretty much because again you know you've done oh yeah you've done stuff and after you're done you just you know that's yeah, it I'm tired. Right. yeah I gotta go. Gotta go. Love to be here, but I gotta go. <laughs> so so he's like, I really need to talk to you. I go, okay, what's up? So basically, his questions were, how does it work? Basically, ba- all everything we covered in this program is what he asked. And here's the mind boggling boggling thing for him. And I already said this to you, but we kind of we kind of glossed over it. I said to him, I said, James, do you understand? the power of you being a hypnotist. And again, everyone, you know, they turn 18 shades of white and their eyes get globed out and they just go, what are you talking about? I'm not a hypnotist. I'm like, James Cameron, you are the one of the most powerful hypnotists in the entertainment industry. Do you understand mm-hmm. what you've created with the movie Titan? And again, this is the height of all of that. Right. Do you understand what you've created with a movie based on factual evidence but it's a movie that's sensationalized and dramatized and now you got people so connected in that theater they're walking out of the theater they're crying they're distraught Mm -hmm. people who went through an experience i don't know what 40 50 years ago and they're connecting to all of that Mm -hmm. you are a master hypnotist by what you've done on the screen and allowing people to take that journey to get to the end result. And of course, for you, it was millions of billions of dollars, notoriety, but people walking out of there were getting something from it on an emotional level. That is the power of suggestibility and being a pure, natural hypnotist and not even understanding your own power. Right. And that just blows wow. mind. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to think I've, and I've never, you know, like this, this it's, it's kind of blowing my mind too earlier when we talked about, this is basically, you know, there's, there's a blurred line between hypnotism and, and, and marketing. Like I, I never, I never thought about that, but when you say it and like, you know, oh, me telling people to subscribe, like that's, I I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Like it, it's, it's very interesting to think of it in that way. It's almost like, you know, I'll, I'll use the improv example. We get people that come into the improv class for the first time. Oh, I've never done improv. Yeah. Like right now, are you using a script? No, you, you've done improv. 
Like, you know, this, yeah. this is just, it be this improv is just if it was, I mean, it wouldn't be scripted if it was, it wasn't improv. Exactly. Exactly. So you, you've been doing this your whole life. So it's, it's, it's weird to think, wow, I've, I've been doing this a lot of my life. It's, it's pretty, it's, uh, it, it's pretty cool. I, I like that. Uh, I like, I mean, it, uh, there's something about this this podcast, you know, where there's something like about, you know, every, I don't know, 10, 15 episodes where something it's like, oh, man, that just changes my my perspective on things. You know, like there's something that happens. So I, I appreciate that, that that happened on on the first episode of this third season. And so I, I picked the right guy for this. Either that or you you totally hypnotized me to do all of this. And um, <laughs> I. I <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you did, but uh, no, I, I totally like. I, I'm I'm fascinated by this conversation and this topic, and I don't think I could have had a better guest to come on and and, and talk about this. Well, I'm um, and humbled and, by your, your statements and your comments, and that's the whole point of this, my friend. And I and I truly believe that's why you do what you do is to stimulate people mm -hmm. to have a different thinking and to chase that thinking and to question it challenge it and utilize it and so that's my mission statement as well uh don't believe what i'm telling you i'm just telling you what i know from my experience and what has gotten right. to where i am at in life and so if you see me as a successful all of these great things that our world sees people as and fantastic then 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 model that behavior utilize that behavior for your own personal life to achieve the ultimate successes and potential that you can possibly do. That's what we're here for in our in this world, in our life. Utilize the gift of what you have mm -hmm. and empower yourself with everything you can get your hands on that is going to work for you to experience this amazing journey. Kevin, how uh, do people reach out to you? How do they get a hold of you? You got the power programs. Tell us about all that because I'm sure that people after this are like, okay, we got to we got to talk to this guy. <laughs> yeah, hypnotist.com. So easy to remember. I'm going to spell it because look, even when I put it in, sometimes I misspell it. Uh, believe it or not, it becomes weird stuff. Uh, it just gets crazy. I should probably buy those domains as well. <laughs> if I'm doing it, other people are doing it, right? So it's hypnotist.com. H Y P is in Paul N O T I S T dot com. So simple, so easy to remember. Go there. Not because I'm telling you to go there, because you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they have to. Jeez. Yes. <laughs> On there, my friend, is like a lot of great free information, a lot of information about hypnosis. It's not just, just about me and my and my power programming and, and stuff about me. You're gonna find a lot of great educational as my website's the same way as I do my programs. It, you get to go there. It's like going to libraries, a lot of educational resources mm -hmm. on there to empower yourself, uh, to enlighten yourself, to understand yourself uh, even better. And this is what I'm going to do for you. Cause I know we're wrapping things up, right? Yep. Yep. So this is what I'm going to do uh, uh, when this airs and um, everyone will know when that is from the moment it airs for one week, one week only. So take advantage and listen to my voice very carefully. I'm giving away the self-hypnosis power programming system value $175 to everyone listening to this program for one week. You have to go to the website hypnotist.com email me Put in the uh, in the subject line, you listen to this particular podcast. Put in the notes. You liked it. You hated it. Couldn't stand your voice. Couldn't stand this podcast. You know how I fell on. Whatever it is you want to say. All those YouTube comments, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to say in the notes is fine. As long as I know you, you came from this program, I will send you MP3 file of the programming system free because you tuned into this program and empowered yourself by listening to just two guys having a conversation about an amazing process. That is awesome. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely. I, I do appreciate that. I, I, I'm going to go there and I'm going to do that. Uh, and I think I'm doing it of my own free will. So. <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I mean, I'm a yeah. little confused on that, but uh, Mark, yeah. <laughs> marketing world, when anything is free, everyone wants it. Yeah, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Whether they want it or not, they're going for it. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, yes, please do go check out hypnotist.com. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. And thank you for listening and subscribing to Learning More. We encourage you and thank you for rating this podcast and sharing it with your friends. As with any podcast that covers medical or legal opinion, the information is not meant to substitute professional advice. We encourage you to consult a professional and discuss your exact needs. I invite you to check out are coming up like, the, like uh, oh my god i'm so excited about the podcast lineup i'm like i can't even like it's it's crazy we've so we're going to talk about like mental health diets right like n- and not just food but like your whole body like what food is doing to your body and then other things that you can do within that diet like yoga things like that like we've got an interview about that it's it's fantastic we've got i don't know there's there's so much stuff I, i'd love to tell you about it but instead go check out the website learningmorepodcast.com there's going to be some information on there follow us on social media and please do like i said listen and subscribe each week to learning more we got new episodes coming out each week and again thank you for all of those that subscribed over the summer fantastic I I was like so excited to come back and see the numbers and how much they increased. So I really do appreciate all of you. And thank you so much. Again, thank you for listening and subscribing to Learning More. I'm Russ, and I look forward to learning more with you next time.